Hey, welcome to LeFleur Arms. This is Dragon Seeds Golf here. So uh, earlier I made a short. I don't know if y'all saw it, but I um, made a short with a Mac 10 uh, that my nephew had. He forgot he had it in his closet. It's in the back somewhere collecting dust. And the case that it came with is not weatherproof or waterproof. So it's still fired. It still functions okay. However, I don't know if you can tell, but it is super rusty. So, this is today's cleaning video. If you like my videos, please subscribe, comment, share. Just thanks for watching, thanks for being here, appreciate it, let's get to it. Alright, so he showed me how to take it apart. Um, and once he took it apart, I noticed it has a bolt, a pretty big bolt, and I'll show you here. This sucker is so rusty. And this little pin comes out this side. And that's basically it. So you can take it apart further. And there's probably some other videos that have the net. This is the trigger housing here. But this thing has such a soft trigger when you fire it down range. It's, it's actually you know, pretty impressive. So, I'm gonna start with this part today. It's rusty. It's, these things are heavy too. It's a submachine gun that the, they tried to propose to the US military, but they ended up not taking it. But, like normal, let's take some shooter lube. Water it down. Now, usually stuff like this isn't my cup of tea. You know, I stick with handguns, um, rifles, and you know, just normal stuff. So this is like known as a what a, a gangster type of <coughs> excuse me a weapon, but it was actually designed for military use. And if you have never seen like an M249 or 240 or 50 cal M2 heavy barrel, uh, they come very similarly put together like this. Now, I'm confident I could take it apart more if I needed to, but I'm not going to. It's not my weapon, so I'm not going to be the one to mess it up. I'm using a lot of this because it needs some solvent on there. Put that to the side. For, so for this one, for the rest, hopefully, uh oh. Don't worry, I can put it back together. So I'm gonna try to penetrate this weapon the best I can. But, it just seems like this type of material collects rust and just, you know, I'm not sure what material it is, not my weapon. But I told my I would, I would clean it to the best I can. Um, it will be lubricated after this, so it's going to fire pretty good. Man, I wish I could get a hand on one of my old weapons from the military because I could really tear those apart like, like nothing. I'm pretty sure I could find videos on this and you know use the videos as, as a reference to, to take it apart more but like I said it's not mine I, I don't mind if I mess up something with my weapons but if it's not mine I don't want to do that so the nephew I'm talking about his name is Trey um, he this is a young man with lots of potential. And he loves guns just like I do. And we have a lot in common besides that. But guns is what binds us. Guns is, is the glue. And we get so excited watching um, different type of videos on guns, making our own videos, doing challenges on the range. It's, it's lots of fun, right?
But yeah, uh, so we're starting a new series. We're gonna call it Pro versus Street, something like that. Obviously, I'm the pro because I have actual training from the military. And he's street because all his uh, knowledge until he met me was what he knew from the streets. And there's no problem with that. By the time I met him, he knew something about gun safety, but I just, you know, helped him develop it more. Sharing knowledge is good. You should share knowledge with your family. And if I have knowledge about guns that he doesn't have, and, and he does his research, so I, I, I don't know much about, uh, you know, guns outside of what I've been trained or what I own, but Trey, I can ask him about whatever, and he, he either has the answer right away, or he'll find it, and, and he has a passion about it, I love that. Um, we watch a couple of the same people on YouTube, and we both agree that we, you know, we love people to just shoot down range, but we want to learn more about the weapons. So we love people to talk about the weapons they use. Um, we love it when people talk about um, how it feels to them, how the trigger feels. So, real quick, this is a 45 ACP and a 45 cal cleaning brush here. But yeah, we, we like to learn more about weapons because, you know, we don't have the money to buy a bunch. So, um, what people give us online, we soak that up. So, this brush is to clean the barrel, which probably hasn't been cleaned in a while. But it still shoots. I know some people say you gotta go one way and take it off, but you know, it's fine. It's still a little bit debris in there. I don't know if you can see that through the camera. All right, let's take that off and put our brush applicator. That's this. I'm gonna spray a little bit of solvent on here. Run that through. It's pretty dirty. Okay. Yeah, it's looking good and shiny. Okay, let's lube it up now. Got the shooter's lube, the actual oil. good now I suspect with this weapon we're going to clean it every time we use it down range not a problem I love taking apart weapons and you know stuff like that so I'm going to use the same brush and get into the corners I couldn't get before so going back to Trey we are opposites in a lot of ways uh, I'm kind of serious sometimes and he's not He's serious when he needs to be. But I think we're going to make a good combination for videos later on. Because with his silliness and my seriousness will blend together for pretty enjoyable stuff, I think. All right. So now I'm going to oil everything up. Let's start with this part here. I'm going to put a lot. I can always get more. Shoot a little bit if you're listening. You can send me some. That would be great. Not bad. 
Now, if you guys know what material this is that makes that makes for rusty guns, let me know. So it's fun to watch all these rapid firing videos, but man, I don't have the money to be wasting on the bricks of ammo. So I just watch them. Plus, it's not how we're trained in the military. You know, obviously I'm not in the military anymore, so I could change that. But you only carry so much ammo with you, so you gotta make each count, each shot count. That's why breathing is important. The way you hold your weapons is important. All that is important. It's important to have a strong core because strong core will give you the base you need to hold a weapon how uh, you need to. Breathing. At one point I was able to uh, slow down my breathing and fire you know when my breathing is slowed down. Now right now I would be playing some music because you know I'm running out of stuff to say but we haven't moved into the house I'm in right now yet because we don't have electricity or water so my laptop uh, really won't work out here right now. I'm going to throw some lube down in here. Usually a little bit goes a long way, but like I said, this V this uh Mac 10 it's been a while since it's been used. Alright, so that's good. Let's look at the actual bolt now. I don't know if you can hear chickens in the background. We have about 10 chickens. One, one of them is a rooster. And they provide lots of eggs. I love it. Now, since this weapon's all metal on metal, lubrication is important. Even on metal and polymer, it's important, but more important, I feel, when it comes to. Uh, you know, metal on metal. So the internal parts of this weapon don't look too rusty, don't look too bad. It's the outside mostly. And the spring, see how it goes in and out like that? So when you fire the weapon, this one helps it eject the round and everything. So I'm gonna put a little bit of lube there and just spread it out. And then that that uh, spring is nice and tight. Still has a lot of tension left in it. All right, Mr. Rusty. Let that oil penetrate in there. Like I said, this trigger, ooh, you barely push it and it goes. You have to make sure you're always pointing up and down range with this weapon. It is 45 ACP. They do make a 9mm. I love 45 ACP. They say it's for old people. But you know what? I am kind of old, right? Okay, let's do this side now. So in case you haven't watched my videos, why do I love weapons so much? That's the time I had as a kid with my dad. It was just me and him and of course his friends, but his friends didn't have any boys, so they would treat me like their son. And it was our thing. He would teach me weapon safety, how to 
cleaning weapons, you know, how to load them, everything. So, time that I'll never get back, but I'm so happy I had that time with Dad. He's still around, but, uh, you know, he's not, he's a little too old to go to the range right now. But I do have a range on my lance. Maybe he'll come shoot. And he does have a little 380. I think it's the uh, Smith & Wesson Bodyguard. Nice little weapon. Now look at this trigger guard. Okay, I'm going to try to get in between here. But yeah, so love of guns started with dad. I was young. Started shooting a 22 long rifle. Then after that, after high school, I joined the army where I got introduced to a whole new world. Man, I loved it. It was a little bit intimidating at first though. Cause, well not at first, let me take it back, okay. So the first weapon we get introduced to, I was a tanker, so we had, you know, different training than other regular army people. So you might have different training. But first thing we got introduced to was the M9 Beretta, 9mm. Uh, I was used to firing like a 45, you know. I fired 9mm before, so it was very familiar. But that's where they teach you that, you know, with a small handgun, they teach you the basics of weapon usage. After that, we got to the M16A2. Uh, now I was in ROTC in high school, so I, I went to summer camps where we were able to fire those, so I was familiar with those already. And then after that, everything was new. I don't remember exactly what sequence of events it was, but uh, before uh, long, we were taking apart the M240, 7.62, French made machine gun that we use on tanks. We had two of those. And then they taught us about the M2 heavy barrel. That's a 50 cal machine gun that's been around probably since World War II. If it ain't broke, don't change it, right? So yeah, we got tons of training on that. I mean, because I wish I had a 50 cal to show you, but it's when you take it apart, it's huge. And it has something called headspace and timing. So headspace is the space between the bolt and the round and the uh, the barrel. So the barrel clicks back and forth. If the headspace isn't right, your, your uh, round is gonna get chambered wrong, it's gonna freeze up on you. And then timing, in actual timing of the trigger, because you pull the trigger, it's fully automatic. It's kind of slow, but I mean, for 50 cal round, it's pretty good. But without the proper timing, it's not going to fire right. So headspace and timing have to be on all the time. I'm sure somebody's got a video of that somewhere out there. I know. I'm boring. Picture music in your head. Looking pretty good. All right, so I'm gonna attempt to put this sucker back together. <laughs> Should be interesting here. And I know it goes like this because Here's where you pulled back the receiver that you came out, and it obviously goes in that hole right there. See? You gotta bear with me, I'm not feeling familiar with this weapon yet. There it goes in like that.
There we go. Okay, so I know it goes down like this. I think these things are machined, so they go in easy. They should once they're lubricated. Oh, I didn't put no lube on this or protect it. Okay. All right, let's see if it. Let's see if the safety works. Safety works. Yep. Good to go. It's oily, but it's going to dry off. Now, also, he has this cool 30-round magazine. This is one of the easiest magazines I've ever had to load. I mean, it, that spring is just so loose, but it's good enough to push it up. So, let's put some solvent on there, too. This uh, magazine seems to be made out of the same material. It's always important that you maintain your magazines too. I'm gonna see how you can you can take it apart if you want to. Uh, in uh, while I was active duty, we used to take apart the M16 magazines and clean them because after being in the sand and dirt and everything else, man, they they needed to be clean. That could help malfunction. Everybody likes the ARs and stuff, but to be honest, M16s for me would always lock, uh, jam, and it's always the way the magazine is so sensitive. If you push on a magazine wrong, it would jam up. Just my experience, M16 wasn't my main weapon because I was a tanker. However, if it does jam up, we have what's called sports. And we'll go over that in a different video later. But basically, it's a way to, to function and check to get you back firing your weapon. All right, let's lay that to the side there. The last thing he does have this suppressor. It screws in like this. So we're going to clean that too. Now I see, you see how it's all scratched up and all that? I mean, it's fine, it's just his stuff. I don't know if he bought it like this or just, you know, over the years it became like this. Okay, I'm not gonna put any oil on this, but I am gonna clean the inside with the brush. Anyway, you know how people have sports cars or really nice cars and they garage them and they try not to use them? People are the same way with guns. They like to buy them and just, you know, I don't know what they do with them. Trey and I, we use our stuff. Why buy it if, you don't, if you're not going to use it? Alright, so just show you. It screws on like that. And it does have a little, you can attach a knob here so when you hold it, you hold it like that so much. That would be way better, holding it like that, versus just like this. But there's a MAC-10 all clean, rolled up, still looks rusty though. Sorry, our tray couldn't get no better. It needs to be dipped. Thanks so much for watching the Flow Arms Drags Golf. 
if you like my videos, please subscribe, share. Um, if you're new, thanks for watching to the end. Um, this is the this is symbol and cleaning of a Mac 10. This is my first time using this weapon and my first time cleaning it and taking it apart. But once you learn the basics, which is what I teach, you could do almost any weapon. And if you don't know how to do it, look at YouTube. Somebody out there knows. For those of you, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Dragon Sisk off out.